turn that off. Hey, hey everyone, thanks for joining me for a live Q&A on that evaluating a, mass, uh, a bathroom, uh, bathroom remodeling project. So if you missed that, check down in the description down below here. Uh, definitely check that out because I really go through a lot of important tips there. So sorry, again, I'm, I'm kind of uh, messing up the beginning of this live stream. So anyways, it's great to see everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, and you know, give me a like on the way in on this video as well, because, uh, it really helps out the algorithm, gives me a lot of motivation to keep moving forward here. Now, as you can see, this was a lot of work. Um, and I hope none of this is going to scare anybody out of doing their own bathroom remodel. Um, uh, but the whole point of this video or the video that you just watched on the premiere uh, is evaluating a bathroom before you get started. You really need a plan ahead, uh, to be able to do something like this efficiently, I hear many, many stories about people getting into a project like this and then getting overwhelmed and then they're in the middle of it and then they just kind of almost give up and just go with, you know, call somebody to come in and, and take over. And I've been the contractor that's taken over quite a few times, to tell you the truth. I've had, uh, I've had clients that, well, they, they, they went through and they demoed the bathroom. Uh, but then they just ran out of energy and they couldn't finish it. And I was more than happy to come in after all the demo was done because these old bathrooms, these are the ones that are going to, uh, I mean, they really take the wind out of you. It is an awful lot of work to get rid of all of that stuff. And if you're not expecting the level of work that it's going to take to get rid of this stuff, um, you know, I could see where people are like, well, if it's this hard just to start out, how am I going to ever get my bathroom done? Um, but that's, you know, I mean, this, I took on this project specifically for that reason, because I wanted to show what was involved to do this, because I think a lot of people buy homes and they have bathrooms like this thinking, Hey, I'm going to go ahead and ba renovate that bathroom one of these days. And, um, you know, they just have no idea what they're really honestly getting into. Uh, a lot of the newer homes, if you're in a newer home, good for you. You'll be able to be a lot easier on your demo process and getting everything out of there. But if you're in a 1940s home, 1950s, even 1960s with these big mud bed walls, it is just an awful lot of work to get them out of there. Um, and be honest, it probably took an awful lot of work to put them in there too. I mean, I couldn't imagine plastering the way these old timers did. I mean, I could just couldn't imagine uh, that kind of level of uh, labor involved. Um, I did this project in about eight days. And, um, you know, that's, you know, I, I could have only imagined what it took them back in the day to be able to do something like that. But I wouldn't expect anybody to just jump in and be able to do this in eight days. But I would, I do have a course that will help guide you through and show you how to go about doing that. Um, so evaluating, uh, yeah, definitely something that you have to, consider um a whole bunch let me get my live chat up here um you, you really have to evaluate all these different features in there because and i mean if you're a contractor it is tough you you know when you're starting out you're just eating a lot of these projects you're eating the cost you're eating um all that labor time that is taking you longer and you're kind of learning the hard way so um if you're a contractor watching this i'm hoping that uh, you'll definitely join the course, Try, you know, I mean, e even if you have a lot of experience and some experience, you know, my course is definitely going to be able to provide something that is going to be valuable to you uh, that that will get you um, quicker because that's all I do. I mean, that's all I do is bathroom remodeling. That's all I do is I'm immersed in this. I get a lot of feedback from everybody. I'm kind of like this conduit to all these people that uh, either call me out on things or, you um, you know, I mean, you put yourself out there, you'll just get all types of criticism. Some of them is really great. Some of it has really been helpful. Some of them definitely taken in consideration and, and going to implement. Um, and some of it is just obviously nonsense. But, um, you know, you, you can't you can always continue to learn. There's so much so much in the bathroom remodeling. Uh, there's so many different ways people are doing things uh, and the materials and the products keep coming that come out are easier. The tools. I mean, my goodness, the tools that keep coming out are just amazing. Uh, you know, I, I was actually, I did a video earlier today on a short about these heavy metal blades that you have for your sawzalls. Uh, and you can cut, cut the cast iron with that. They didn't have that 15, 20 years ago. You didn't have a sawzall blade. I mean, you had, they had metal sawzall blades, but it would take a dozen of them to cut through a piece of uh, cast iron, especially if you're going through a three inch pipe. I used to, uh, you know, you can rent a, uh, and I don't even know if anybody rents these things anymore, but there was these wheel, um, basically a ratcheted wheel cutoff 
tool for cast iron that you could go to Home Depot or whatever and rent it. And it would cost you 50 bucks or 30 bucks to rent the thing. And all you're doing is cutting, cutting the main waste stack. Um, now that they come out with these heavy metal blades, it's just like so much faster. And I could cut, I could do multiple bathrooms with, with a one fifteen dollars blade. So all I'm saying is, is there's a lot to learn. And, you know, I'm, that's what this whole channel is about is about, you know, um, you know, trying to make bathroom remodeling simple, uh, making it a lot easier than, than, than having to learn things the hard way. Cause I certainly wish I would have had all the resources that everyone has out there right now, uh, with social media, YouTube, all of this stuff. Um, you know, there really wasn't anybody that I can remember back, uh, to learn off of until, you know, Mike Holmes came on HGTV and I was like, Whoa, okay. I never really thought about all the waterproofing systems and stuff that he was using. I never really thought about this or that. All I had was like, you know, the Lowe's Home Depot and some of these other places to, to learn. So, but that was, you know, 22 years ago now. So I started out in 2000. So a lot has changed, a lot of more information out there. So, um, Hey, Chris, I'm sorry to hear that, man. You're in the middle of doing one right now. <laughs> that is rough. Um, yeah. So Eddie, uh, how much labor are we talking about versus drywall? Yeah, I would, you know, in this particular bathroom, I'll even just pull up the estimate. Why not? I'll just show you what I actually charge because this was just done a couple, uh, about a month ago. So, you know, this will give you some incentive to, to do this yourself. Uh, or maybe you'll be like, Hey, <laughs> I'd rather just pay somebody that price to do it for me. Um, but this was uh, March 1st was a quote that I gave out. And we did a little bit of changing, uh, not really significantly anything to like the floor plan necessarily, but we took out the closet and made that kind of like an open space versus having uh, a door because having a door swinging out against another door is kind of pain. You know, it sucks. It's just not anything great. So we took that out. And then I think the client's eventually going to be putting some kind of, um, you know, hutch or some kind of cabinet set up within that area, but it's all open now. So that was the only major difference that thing that we changed on it, but it was basically a five by eight bathroom. And this is kind of typical having a closet to the hallway off the back of the shower. That also gave you access to the plumbing there as well, but demo. So demoing this bathroom, 2,500 bucks. That's what I charge. I probably charge a little bit more than that <laughs> after doing that because I'm actually still, uh, my forearms are still a little sore from that. <laughs> so, uh, and that was over a month and a half ago. So it, it's, it's very strainful on your body to get rid of all that stuff. I think that the, uh, the, when I took it to the landfill, it was, uh, a total of for the, for the whole bathroom demo, it was 3,900 pounds worth of material. It was 2,900 pounds on the first day, but then I have a dump trailer that I throw things in. But so overall, the entire bathroom weighed almost 4,000 pounds um, on it. Hey, Fazach, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate that. I appreciate uh, the support. That really, really helps me out. I really appreciate it. Um, Jesus Lopez, awesome job. Thanks. Um, uh, about to do a master bathroom and it's all mud floor for ce to ceiling, all the way to the ceiling. Oh my goodness, Eddie. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of weight. That's going to be a lot of work to get out of there. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's demo. It's not anything fun, obviously. Uh, just, you know, you, if you know what you're in for, at least you're not going to be stressed out about losing on it. But, um, you know, I would probably honestly, somebody suggested uh, in one of my videos that I should charge by the pound uh, on it. And that's actually really not a bad idea. Um, I actually didn't think that was too bad of an idea because it is, it's a lot of, it's a lot of strain on my truck. It's a lot of strain on my body, you know? So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if some people wouldn't charge close to four grand to tear out all of that bathroom. And I'm talking about the entire demo process, getting rid of everything. Um, but Hey, you know, with all the inflation, all these different things, I mean, I just went to the landfill today and it went up another, um, 20 bucks or something like that for per ton or something. So everything is costing more as well. Um, but I'll just go through this really quickly. This wasn't really my intention of this, but since somebody was asking about what it would cost to do something like this, I figure I'll um, just quickly go through it. Um, but plumbing and under lemons, I was basically replacing all the water supplies. I duly recommend that doing that. Um, there's really no sense in keeping all the copper stub outs. Like they had three eighths inch chrome extensions, like I was mentioning there. You know, there's, you know, you can go, I would put new pecs and new, new female adapters if you want that extension, but 
when you see in my course, there's really no reason to do that. You'll probably see a bunch of YouTube videos of, of what I'll have on there as well. I mean, when you're using those shark bike fittings or, or anything else, you can get pretty close to the wall and not have any copper exposed. Um, but yeah, or just use a copper stub out, honestly. And that's what I did for the pedestal sink and everything else. So um, anyways, water supplies just automatically replace them. That's not, that's un, that's not really negotiable when I even look at something like this, like this old bathroom. I, all the water supplies are going to be replaced. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about going all the way to the water heater or going all the way across the basement. I'm just saying right from wherever the most convenient spot is um, underneath the bathroom. But all the supplies to the shower faucet, toilet and sink are going to be replaced. And, you know, PEX, I mean, it might be 150 bucks or something like that to do that. So not a big deal. Waistlines, um, I was converting a tub to a walk-in shower. So we needed a two-inch drain all the way down. Um, really no sense in adapting to some of that stuff as you've seen in that video and we'll get into that here shortly um, there is no sense and I'll probably be repeating myself here a little bit but uh, basically just changed everything over to PVC all the horizontal plumbing I kept the existing vents going up through the roof you know those things aren't really they really don't ever go bad or any real reason to have to go to that extent going all the way through the roof but at that point you know this is a one-story home it wouldn't have been that much effort to, to actually just do that um, but you know, I mean, it was galvanized piping. There was a couple little turns and stuff, and it just wasn't worth the extra, you know, probably to the client to spend a couple hundred dollars more to do that. And really at the end of the day, it's not really benefiting anything either. So, um, I put a preform base in, I used a, um, a dreamline shower base, put the shower doors on waterproofing with go board. And we did have a, like a, a bench in this one as well. And I quoted to do a, uh, a shower system with, um, at the vertebrae, they actually went with a little bit simpler thing, so I actually did knock some money off of the way that they went about it. You'll see in my course uh, shortly on that and what I did there, but um, around three grand for all of that. So you can definitely <laughs> could definitely cost a bit more th than that um, in a lot of places because you know that's it was really about a day and a half's worth of work, um, but depending on you know your skill level, it might take a little bit longer to do. Electrical, put a new vent fan in. I did have to do a GFI, so that was an additional cost. I don't have that incorporated in here, but like I was mentioning, most of those outlets in those old bathrooms are usually connected to the lighting circuit. That's really not a good idea. If you're gonna tear out all those walls and get everything open, um, you really should run a dedicated circuit for that uh, GFI, just so that that's safe, just so you're safe. And if you're a contractor doing this for somebody, just to make sure that you're not going to be liable for anything that goes on. You don't want to um, leave that existing wire to that lighting fixture if you already tore out all those walls. You really should uh, update that. So I always have that in my quotes right here. I even had um, replace all switches and outlets. Additional work order will be provided for any issues discovered upon demo. So some of these things is what you want to write in there. I'm no, <laughs> you know, I could definitely be better at uh, how I highlight stuff like that. But I do just want to keep the client understanding that there might be some issues. I can't. I don't know exactly what all is incorporated with your wiring. Um, I was able to tell what kind of wiring it was, you know, from the light fixture and from you know when I uncovered that GFI. But um, you know, if you if you uncover knob and tube or something like that, you can't you can't be covering that up. Um, it's going to have to get replaced, and that could be a lot you know a lot of additional expense uh, for that client. But you have they have to be aware that. Um, hey, you know, when we tear this out, some of these things are just, you know, we just don't know whether I have to change out. So I did have to run a dedicated circuit for the outlet um, and you should have a 20 amp line for that. And then I had light fixtures and I put a recess light above the shower. So I had a little under a thousand dollars for that. Um, now I didn't um, in this particular bathroom, they were going to eventually have the roof replaced and they're going to put a roof fan in above. So the, the venting um, was going to be addressed later on. Um, so, and then the towel enclosed, or I should say the drywall and painting r roughly two grand, um, definitely uh, incorporated, uh, having some new ceiling insulation and new exterior wall insulation. You're almost guaranteed to do that. Um, I always change out. I mean, even if it was in the, in the back wall, by the time you tear everything out, it's going to look terrible and out of messy. And a lot of times it's just, it wasn't, it was older insulation that didn't have the R value that we have today. So I would definitely, you know, suggest or have that in your quote to give those clients, um, hey, it's going to be another 150 bucks to do some insulation. 
um, just automatically incorporate that for that exterior wall. And then the ceiling is questionable. You just don't know until you tear it out or unless you had access above to check it out. Um, towel shower. Uh, this was a very simple shower. I did kind of want to do a very simple tile layout. The client definitely wanted, you know, he, he was the one who suggested that they wanted a, a simple tile layout. So it wasn't very expensive on the towel end, roughly two grand that included the um, all the grout and all the thin set, they purchased the towel, which wasn't really all that much. Ceramic towel floor, um, after I was done with that, was about 800 bucks. It's usually about a day and a half's worth of work. Um, that's them buying the towel, I should say, but I provide the thin set, all the other stuff that incorporated with it. Glass enclosure, charge about 750 bucks to install. They purchased the glass enclosure. So here it is. I put in a pedestal sink. They purchased that. They purchased all the accessories and all the, the toilet and all the other things that go along with it. So my grand total for what I charged him was around thirteen thousand, um, and then they had probably around five to six thousand dollars worth of expenses. So this roughly was about an eighteen to twenty thousand dollar bathroom. I think they, he did come out around nineteen thousand. So and that could really go sideways a bit too. I mean, depending on what you can uncover. I was really lucky and fortunate that I was able to see underneath of that ceiling and and. Um, see what needed uh what i was in for it right off the bat um some of the stuff i wasn't totally um a little bit surprised on was that um i had those lath boards in between i thought there was going to be plywood on top and it wasn't i should have paid attention to that a little bit more when i first looked at that so so that kind of gives you a rough rundown on that i wasn't even really planning to get into that but uh let me see who else is in the chat here uh redberry how do you feel about tiling even with edge of tub, so it's straight transition to the alcove, needs to save the room for the depth of the toilet. Um, I, you know, right to the edge of the, yeah, I, I still don't like that, but I can understand where you might have to do that. I'm not sure how the towel work has interferes with your toilet. I still, you know, he's asking me about, um, you know, whether you just go straight off the tub and straight up. I always, if you're having a tub, I always recommend having tile at least two inches outside of that going down alongside that that um, tub surround if you're in an alcove situation um red berkey uh you know i don't know how great that's going to look honestly because you're not going to have any type of corner at all going over the edge there that kind of might be kind of ugly looking i always try to bump things out about an inch or so so but uh, yeah that gives you the quote um concept there let me just take i was going to show you oh did i already check out of that uh, no i didn't okay there we go all right so Showing my course, um, you know, I'm not trying to do a major sales pitch on this, but I wanted to get into it to go over some of these evaluations of things. So um, links in the description of this video. So if you guys are interested, check it out. Even if you purchase it and you say, you know what, this is over my head. I don't even want to do this. This is way over my head. I have no problem refunding you the money. I'm, I'm really here just to help people who are actually doing their bathroom remodels. And, um, you know, so if, if it's something that, it's over your head and you don't even want to get into um i totally understand but at least you know i can help you you know have you um, evaluate that to, to see whether that's even something you do want to do and i will say i mean when you're looking at these old bathrooms the 1940s bathroom if that's the kind of bathroom you had um it is it's yeah it's definitely taxing you're definitely gonna have to um you know allocate enough time to be able to get this done so right now i have four courses you can buy all of them in a bundle um, but I have the tub two shower course. That's what this one is. I have the tub shower bathroom remodel uh, within seven days or less. Basically, I highlight, I really highlight the seven day process of what it would take to do a full bathroom remodel. Now, this is a newer home that I was doing that in. This was a 1970s home that I was doing the tub, the shower. So a lot easier on the demo process that plumbing is newer to the certain extent. It still had copper but it wasn't to the level of what this older bathroom was. So you might, you're definitely probably not going to do this in seven days um, on these older bathrooms. But anyways, I really highlight how you go about the pattern of getting some, getting this done. I mean, a lot of it's somewhat obvious, but other things um, I really think that, that um, you know, it's just about keeping yourself moving and getting, uh, you know, especially, you know, when you're cutting everything down to the studs and getting rid of all that drywall, you know, there's timing issues on everything. Drywall mud has to dry, uh, your towel has to set before you grow out and all these other things. So I really kind of break it down to a day by day basis. And, um, you know, I'm hoping if you're, you're on this channel, you're looking at my stuff here that you're 
trying to put a plan together on what you're going to do with your own bathroom. And these courses are definitely going to be helpful to help you out with that as well. And you'll see when we get in here, how they kind of laid out so that it's just easy to, to follow. So let me go back here as a student. So if you bought the uh, DIY collection, which is only $99 right now, and you'll get all of the courses and in the future, you'll get all the future co uh, courses as well. Um, at least that's what I plan to do with the, the geek collection. Um, and uh, so that, that price will be going up over time here with the, the $99 deal. So, but going into the tub course here, let me shrink myself down here a little bit. I'll get on this side here. <laughs> so basically I go through the whole process. So that demo towel of mud bed walls, um, removing all of that, that, I think that, that should definitely be something that if this is what you're gonna attempt to check that out. Um, you know, I mean, unfortunately it's really not much more than um, banging it out. I mean, but at least it gives you show you what you're in for when you're getting into it. Um, I have gotten a lot of um, comments about my mud, my towel mud bed walls. I probably removed about 15 to 16 bathrooms that had these mud bed walls. I've just found it the easiest with the framing hammer, just remain, removing it that way. But uh, a lot of people are talking about using a demo, um, a demo hammer. Uh, chisel type deal. I, I've never had any luck with that going down the walls. I find it very cumbersome to tear you. But getting into the old towel floor uh, removal, plumbing, uh, major, major plumbing stuff going on here. So I really highlight that. Now, every situation is a little bit different, but at least I'd be able to guide you through what most vent configurations should be, um, you know, and, and just uh, just strategies of going about it. Um, because most of the time when you have these old tubs, they only have an inch and a half drain. So you really should have two inch. Um, and if you're getting to this level of demo, then you definitely just, just make everything right. Go, go to, go make it go the code and get, get everything, um, at two inch. Now I, I do kind of, I feel like the two inch, um, shower drain, uh, concept would be a little bit ridiculous. Uh, maybe other plumbers on here might be able to push back on that. I don't really understand. I mean, I understand that a tub, uh, if it slowly drains for any reason that you have, you know, a tub's worth of water to, to flow that, that, you know, you're not going to overflow, um, your, your tub as quickly as you would like your shower base. Um, from my understand, that's the biggest concept of making it a two inch drain, uh, and showers content can, have more gallons per minute going out of them, uh, depending on all the features that you have. Uh, but honestly, most people are just doing a handheld and a shower head. So you don't really have anything more than five gallons per minute. I personally don't see any reason why inch and a half isn't good for most of uh, shower drains, but it's, it is their code and that's what they want. So I find it to be somewhat ridiculous. I mean, it's definitely better because two inch is definitely better because it definitely will clog less and everything else. I think it's great to do. I just think in a lot of circumstances, it's not that big of a deal um, because, you know, you're, 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 you know, if, if the, if the drain's clogged, the drain's clogged, but I don't know how much time that's really going to save you anyways from a two inch to an inch and a half in a shower drain, or just maybe to shut off the water if it's not draining, you know? Um, anyways, um, we go through electrical framing, drywall, um, all great tips in there. The framing actually in this one was actually pretty ridiculous. Uh, I wasn't expecting the level of um, shimming out that I was going to have to do on all of these walls. And honestly, it did cost me quite a bit more money. Um, you know, plywood these days is not cheap. And I used a lot of three quarter inch plywood. Funny thing is, is that it actually cost me more to plywood this floor than it did to tile it, which I think is crazy. It was $260 for the plywood. I think the homeowner bought $100 worth of tile, $125 worth of tile. And I had about $50 worth of thin set. Um, and then I had another $50 worth of Detra. So, so that's crazy. 260 versus $200. It would actually cost more to ply with that floor than it did to uh, tile it. But then I went through another $400 of the plywood, um, basically shimming out all the walls and getting everything ready for drywall. Um, these old homes with the plaster, they're just not evenly coated. And they're going to require... Uh, you know, a lot of them aren't even with each other either. So, you know, you got to have to sister on new studs or you, or, or shim things out. Now, most of this shimming was because the plaster was thicker than the drywall. And for like, for instance, my doorway coming into the bathroom, I needed to shim that wall out because I did, I wanted my drywall flush with my door jams. 
And then the other thin walls that I had in this bathroom uh, basically had outlets, those old metal outlets that basically stuck outside of those um, sideways two by fours. So I needed to fur that out because the plaster again was thicker. And then going around the shower pan, I do like to just shim out everything so that my backer board goes down over top of that shower pan. Uh, I go into the shower pan installation. This really did save quite a considerable amount of money. Um, these shower pans, this was a Dreamline shower pan. Uh, I think it was like 450 bucks uh, to, for that pan, but it was a very nice, uh, well-built pan. I was happy with it. We did a mortar bed set on it. Um, you know, really well constructed, really going to be easy to clean for the client as well. So if you really want to save yourself, you know, I mean, if you're hiring somebody, you're definitely going to save you a thousand bucks. Um, but, uh, you know, also towel, you know, that isn't cheap either when you're doing this, unless you're doing large format towel in some fashion, you know, you could probably spend two to $300 on tile just to do a shower base. So I don't know. I, I I'm kind of liking the shower base idea these days a lot. I, I mean, you know, I definitely like tile, but, uh, you know, if you're trying to be on a budget and trying to be more affordable, these are really great. I go through my waterproofing. My favorite one is go board right now. Uh, pretty fast and easy, not so expensive either. I think it was around $350 to waterproof that entire shower. And then we just went with 12 by 24 inch tile. So this is a very streamlined, easy deal, but I do provide a lot of great tips um, on going about tiling that will, will help you out and make it a little bit easier for you. Leveling system definitely helps out a lot using a laser. And then my favorite grout, I went with um, one of my favorite grouts. I went with uh, Spectralock One. So that, that is a very simple grout to use, really DIY friendly. Um, you know, I definitely think that uh, you have a lot of, you can always go back and fill in an area that you messed up or something like that. Or if you had some thin set coming through your, uh, um, through your grout joint and you need to fix it, you can do that with uh, the Spectralock pretty easy. Tiling a floor, obviously a big part of the job. Um, shower doors, pedestal sink, a lot of great tips on there. Really, uh, pedestal sinks worked out pretty well, but you can add up a lot more time installing one of these things than just the standard vanity. Uh, so it's, it's, all, it's basically all about preparation and being uh, planning ahead for this to make it look good and then making it easy for yourself. And then I go into this, the toilet, um, toilet installation as well. But just going into my curriculum, just to show you basically how I highlighted it, it's... Um, you know, introduction and preparation. That's where we're going to get into this evaluating situation. We're going to go a little bit more into detail on that and, and answer any questions you guys may have. Uh, but the demo process, going through all of that, removing that cast iron tub, uh, the mud bed walls, med ball floors, and the floor prep for the plumbing, uh, and then rough in plumbing. So we got uh, cutting that existing plumbing, the toilet connection, pedestal sink, a lot of great details in there, putting that new shower trap in, uh, putting in new plywood and then the rough and electrical vent fan. My favorite one, obviously, is the uh, Panasonic. Uh, that's one of my favorite ones for putting a shower light in above the shower. Pretty easy stuff there. Um, and then running a GFI all the way down to the panel. I show you the inside of the panel and where how you want to um, uh, basically hook that up. Um, we put in a new switch box because we want to make it three switches, one for the overhead light, one for the vent, and one for above the shower. Uh, drywall, everything that's incorporated with that from hanging it uh, to uh, the first, second, and third coat. We do actually did a plaster repair hole because one of the outlets client wanted to turn around the other way. So we um, have a little bit of a plaster repair in there for you. And in the outside, Schluter um, edging. So if you have an alcove like we did there in an outside corner, I'll give you a little bit of advice on uh, setting that Schluter edge so that you can finish that wall nicely. The shower pan, four different steps in there. Um, making sure that your framing is good, but then setting the shower pan and the drain connection. I love the OD um, no caulk drains. I think those are the easiest ones to install, especially on a new, you know, when you're setting in the pan, you can just allow that riser pipe to just hang out, not a big deal. Go through the waterproofing, tiling a floor, tiling a shower, and then uh, the shower trim and the bench. The bench was really cool. I thought that was a really nice feature in here as well. And then I did my uh, a Dreamline shower door system. And I give you some good advice in here as well, because um, it actually fought me a little bit on this project. And uh, you just want to make sure that if your pan is, in, is out of level in any way, you want to add a little bit more height to those, that top rail so that you can, uh, it doesn't rub on the, uh, uh, the door tracks. There's guides for the sliding doors and you don't want them to rub. 
So there we go. So that's the full deal. But let's get, let's get into the evaluating thing again and just recap because this is going to show you how my course is put together as well. So I really don't want you have to watch another entire, you know, 10, 15 minute video when you when, uh, you know, when you're trying to learn about how to do this. I don't think that's necessarily um, needed. Uh, basically, I have everything written down below that you can quickly reference. So um, Fast Hatch, thanks so much, man. You're, you're really awesome. <laughs> um, Steve, if you're using special lock grout, do you need to seal the towel first in the grout or can you use grout towel seal after grout has been applied? I hope that makes sense. Um, so, you know, the only, if you want to be, be uh, if you want to be extra cautious, just using a, um, what do you call it? Um, a grout release would be a good way to just, it's just insurance really to make sure that it doesn't hold on to any haze. And the only time that I've ever, so here's like a lot of Crete stone tech. Um, this is a grout release. This stuff is really simple. I mean, it's literally, you just put it on with a roller or even can put a, use it on a rag and just kind of wipe it on there. But I, I use like a little, one of those little mini rollers, just roll it on there, let it dry for about an hour and then go ahead and grout it. But this will kind of like, this is a grout release. It basically is preventing that, that haze or anything getting into the pores. The biggest issue that I've ever had with any of this stuff, and I haven't had it with uh, Spectralock One. So far, I haven't really had any issues with Spectralock One as far as haze. Um, but a lot of the old premixes I used to use, um, that used to be a real problem for me. And I started using some grout release and it helped out. Um, but some of the uh, really high gloss uh, porcelain tiles, these are actually porous, so you want to put some grout release on that, um, so that, that it kind of kind of fills those uh, pores in there, and then go ahead and grout. But that will give you some extra, just a you know preventative um, insurance that will prevent any hazing from actually happening. But if it's like a standard um, porcelain tile that has a, a decent um, coating on it, or or even or hone finish or something like that, like this tile. Really wasn't anything great from Home Depot that I used in this bathroom, and uh, there was no issues with that. Um, you know, but the big thing about preventing that haze is not just with the grout release, but um, is using a microfiber cloth after you uh, sponge everything off. Going over that, looking up at the light, making sure that you don't see any haze uh, left over on it. But yeah, that's um, the grout release is just. You know, that simple insurance doesn't really cost a whole heck of a lot. I always have a gallon in my trailer so I can just roll on it. No, I didn't. I don't do it on everything. Um, I bet I'm really more uh, cautious just with that higher gloss, you know, really glossy uh, porcelain tiles because I know that I've had, you know, really horrible experiences in the past for it. But if it's a normal ceramic, uh, like subway tile type stuff, yeah, you're not going to really. I don't think it's really even worth the effort to do that. But then, yeah, go ahead and you don't, I mean, even porcelain after that, I mean, you really don't really necessarily have to seal that either, but, uh, you know, grout release would be the way to go. So, um, so, so, uh, Yusuf, you said when wiring a bathroom fan, which Romex do you use? Usually you only need the 14 to, um, 15 amp line. So, um, but if you have existing 20 amp wire to it, like the thicker uh, 12 gauge stuff, then you want to just match it. You don't want to be mismatching 15 and 20 amp wires together. So if you're, if it depends on what you have existing, but if you don't have anything existing at all, yeah, a 15 amp line, the uh, 14 two, perfectly fine. You can run a 14 three if you want to try to separate the, if there's a light in it or a night light. Um, I mean, some of these fans have like all, you know, a night light, a regular light, and a fan. So then you need to run actually. Um, a three-way wire and a two-way wire up to it to make everything work but then but then you got like a three you know a three switch thing just for the fan which i think is ridiculous so um no wor no worries fast Hatch. Th thanks so much for the uh, super chats i really appreciate it so yeah evaluating um the bathroom these old bathrooms there are a lot to take on uh and if you're a new contractor uh, you can be overwhelmed i know my first project i did like this I'm trying to think and remember now. It was in Squirrel Hill. It was um, an older home, 19, probably even older than 1940s. I think it was 1930s. I only charged like six grand to do it. And uh, I thought that that was a considerable amount of money. It was going to cut, you know, it was only going to take me a week and a half to do or something. And I was there for three weeks. 
Uh, I had no idea what I was getting into. It was like an old shower that had all these mud bed walls as well. It was just an enormous amount of work. I was totally unexpected. And you know what? When you're overwhelmed and you're kind of defeated with this stuff a little bit, it definitely does make it uh, a longer process. And you feel, um, I don't know. It's just like if you know what you're in for and you know it's just going to be terrible for a day or two to tear this out, then you're okay with it. But if you were really expecting to be in there and get this all gutted out in, in a few hours, uh, it can really make you um, question your abilities on the rest of it. So, so anyways, I'm not trying to scare you out of doing a, a project like this. It's just know what you're in for. So, um, so yeah, you know, obviously the first thing I did when I came into this bathroom, I knew that it was going to be a major demo job. So it was definitely going to be charging 2,500 to three grand right off the bat for it. And, and you know what, if you're a contractor, I, I do, I've been really working on doing this now because I do get a lot of uh, calls all the time about um, bathrooms. And I try to get people to send me the uh, some pictures of their bathroom prior to even me wasting my time coming out. Because if I see a bathroom like this, I just want to let them know up front, like kind of where the ballpark is, because I don't even want to come out if you're thinking that you can get this done for 10 grand. Um, you know, and a lot of people do. A lot of these older homes, people, you know, in these neighborhoods, they didn't spend a lot of money on their house. They don't have a lot of money. And they still have this mindset that it's going to be 10 grand or 15 grand. And that's not going to happen. That's just, that's just not going to happen these days. Um, you know, especially, if, I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate that I just work alone. So I was able to do this myself in eight days. My, my wife is there filming me, but I don't have any employees. I don't have any of that stuff. So it, I would, you know, if I had an employee, I'm definitely adding a few more grand to the bid because I'm going to have to account for all the, uh, taxes I got to pay and all the other things that I got to incorporate into that, trying to keep them busy and everything. So, um, anyways, uh, you know, going in there first thing when I saw those mud bed walls, like okay, that's three grand right off the bat, twenty five hundred, um, and then trying to evaluate the switches. You just kind of want to give them a sense of what they're going to be up against, and uh, you know, the the, the wiring, um, you know, needing a dedicated circuit. You, you just don't want to, you just want to be responsible as a contractor to leave something like that in the wall because uh you know you should you should know that that uh shouldn't be connected to that lighting circuit but anyways um i basically just have this highlighted in picture form so that you can just kind of browse through here um the walls that bump out like that are thick mud bed walls they're not going to be easy to remove the floor could be two to six inches and that's what i wanted to show you my worst nightmare of a bathroom and this is definitely out of the norm but pay attention to the levelness of these old bathrooms this is a lot of weight. And you know what's funny is like how, uh, you know, um, there's all this new engineer. I mean, the engineering is great. We need engineers. We needed them to, to engineer these homes that the way they are now. Back then, it was just kind of up to whoever did it, you know, whatever contractor did it. And, and as far as, you know, they just kind of used nominal framing lumber. They didn't double anything up. They didn't really even incorporate the amount of weight that all of this was going. So I would... You know, if you're gonna towel over this floor, you know, it's a, it's, it's not, a, it, it, you can definitely do that, but I would not towel over these, these sidewalls. Um, you're just adding way too much weight. I'd be concerned about the structure underneath and whether there's actually enough, it can actually, you know, hold any more weight than it already is. Like I was saying, it was over 4,000 pounds, but paying attention to your floor, making sure that when you go into that room, uh, put a level on that floor. If it's out. Uh, a quarter inch, half inch, okay, not the end of the world. Um, you're going to have to probably address that when you get into the framing layer um, or do some floor leveler. So definitely add on a few hundred dollars to do that. I would say about three to four hundred dollars if it's really like a half inch out of level because it's going to take that extra time to do the framing. Hopefully you can just do framing. That'd be the cheapest way. But then you could also, when you reply, would it just do floor leveler? But that doesn't really save you any money floor leveler is expensive a bathroom like this will probably take three bags it's 150 bucks you're going to be better off just a sister new joists on and uh getting that bathroom floor level if you're if you're a quarter inch or under don't even don't even worry about it it's not that big of a deal but what i'm trying to say is that if you're like an inch out um you should be kind of trying to investigate a little bit more about the structure it could be just the settling of the home doesn't really matter you can't it's really going to fight you on every avenue if it's an inch out of level you can't keep it that way you're going to have to level it out and then i'll show you some of the the worst um products i've ever had 
uh, with that. Um, and it's just astounding some of the, 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 the notching and the, and when the plumbers came in, I don't know who did it, but some plumbers had, uh, had, had run some plumbing, uh, to repair the old bathroom and, and just completely compromised all the joists. So you have to be aware that there's probably people working on this bathroom prior. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're just not going to know until you, until you rip things up. But if you're an inch out of level, you're going to have to definitely pad your bid or at least highlight that in your quote to say, hey, um, this is an inch out of level. It's going to need some additional framing. I'm not sure 100% sure what that is, uh, but uh, it's going to, you know, it could could increase the cost. Now, that you might lose the job over that because somebody else is going to come in there and give them a straight up quote. But you don't want these jobs if you if you're somebody's not going to uh, respect that kind of um mentioning of things because this is just an old bathroom you know there's there's going to be things that you're going to uncover that are going to need to be addressed um but really two different ways about the mud bed um or three i should say the one that i just uncovered the way that we did uh was a lot easier than what i anticipated because i was expecting this on the right here so when you're looking at this here this is an old bathroom i did oh i don't even know this is in squirrel hill as well i think i did this um 2008 or 2007 but um, you can see how the joists on the top here are all notched out uh, basically cut out of v and they did that so that the, the, the when they put the mortar bed on you, the mortar bed wouldn't crack on the joist it kind of gave it kind of gave it a little bit something to, for that mortar to grab in on but what it does is just completely compromises the top of that joist so you're going to have to sister on all new studs or all new joists, I should say, to be able to put plywood over top of it. And this stuff, as you can see, four to six inches thick, um, really a bear to get out. Um, just a lot of weight. I mean, basically, it's just a lot of trips up and down the stairs if you're on a second floor. Um, I remember this bathroom was on the second floor, but there was like 20 steps to get up to the house. So it was like it really felt like more like three flights of stairs to get all the way up there. But um Know that this is going to take a lot of work um, to, to replace. And do I even have the sister Joyce? I don't have the sister Joyce. This was before I even really was taking any real footage of my stuff. So um, I really wish I would have had some filming of that before that. But, uh, you know, again, if you wanted to go over this existing floor, you definitely can. Um, when you're removing the mud bed walls, you are going to, you're going to have to do some filler in around the edges because that... Um, you know, these mud beds are about an inch and a half out. So you're going to have a little bit of work that you're going to have to, you know, use a floor patch of some sort up against the walls. Um, but, you know, when I was re converting this from a, a shower or a tub to a shower and I was replacing all the plumbing, it just makes sense just to tear up the floor as well. This it really wasn't that much space to do. Uh, so I, I still think you're better off just to remove the floor as well. You're not really saving yourself especially if you're going to have to redo some of the plumbing. You're not saving yourself any um, time at all. You're actually probably taking longer to be able to change out that plumbing because once you tear this all up, you can actually see down in and, and route everything pretty easily above. So, um, Dave, I'm getting ready to start a plaster bathroom pretty soon. Okay, nice, man. Um, that could definitely... Uh, uh, you know, plaster, it's not so bad um, to remove those things. It's actually it's fairly easy in a lot of ways, but you'll definitely probably have some metal lath around windows or around the outside corners and stuff that will be kind of sucked to get removed. Um, they used to use a lot of metal lath up in the ceilings uh, on the corner transition. I usually do like just take a, a sawzall and, and try to cut that. But, you know, if you're tearing everything out, it shouldn't be a big deal for you to just tear that out. Um, Handy Mac Jig. Hey, Steve. How do you ask your customer to film in your bathroom <laughs> working on a project? Uh, I actually have a contract with them, actually, and I won't even take the, you know, these days I won't even take the job if I'm not going to uh, be able to film it because I want to keep, you know, providing more stuff on this platform. Um, so that really is kind of something that's talked about beforehand. But I do have a contract um, that gives me the rights to the, the content and, and, um, and, you know, the ability to be able to film everything. So... Um, yeah, that's all worked out prior um, to doing it. Um, you know, you really should if you're going to be filming yourself in someone's home to at least not let them know that you're doing that and then also being clear about that uh, the rights of those videos are going to be yours. I do provide a discount 
on on the job for that as well. So, uh, Dave Smith, I normally use Door Rock for shower walls and floor. Den Shield is a lot easier on the walls. I I don't know what to use. Um, I don't know about using on floor. I don't know about using Den Shield on the floor either, man. I don't really. I mean, I've used Den Shield before. I don't really see a lot of it out. I don't even know where to get it around here right now. Um, but it's like you know, it's kind of like a drywall base. It's like a gypsum base. It doesn't seem like it would be great for floors, but I know that they say you can use it for floors. Um, but you should check out that Go board, man. Uh, I, it really is, um, you know, I don't know what it is now, but it's about 25 bucks a sheet or something like that, um, at least contractor pricing. So Go board, um, you can do that on the floors as well. I'd feel better and more confident about thin setting Go board down on the floor than um, than using the den shield. I don't know. I, I just have a. Um, I've used it before. I think it's, it's great for shower walls and stuff like that. But I, um, I, I think that the foam board, you know, having that foam core and everything is a better product. Um, but most of the time I'm just using Detra, Dave, for the floors, you know, new plywood and then using that, the orange Detra mat. I think that's really, um, one of the fastest, easiest way to go is I know it is expensive. Um, but, uh, you know, it depends on what you're going on. I mean, if it's a wood subfloor, yeah, you're gonna have to do Detra or, or do some kind of isolation membrane on top of that. So, but anyways, if you're going to go over this floor, if you had to, if you want, if you really needed to, you could definitely do that. Artex 8 plus 9 uh, will provide a, a waterproof, um, basically, uh, isolation membrane over it. So if I were to go through the two, I would use Artex 8 plus 9 all day long, because then at least you can actually waterproof the floor do uh, basically two coats of this and you'll be good in shape. This is just going to provide you a good surface um, to, to thin set over uh, the prime grip. So if you're not worried about waterproofing, you know, then then go with the, the, the prime grip. You can put that on there, just roll that on. And um, I don't know how long it takes to dry. I can't remember now. It might be an hour or two to dry. You might, you might want to do that the night before, before you uh, go into doing the tiling the next day. But definitely can towel over this, but again, if you're getting into this level of a demo where you're going to be removing that tub and putting in a shower, it's really not going to be worth your time messing around with that old floor. You're going to be better off to tear that out, even though it's a little bit scary and you're going to have everything exposed below. But this is what I wanted to mention about when you have significant bow or significant thing. And this, this is what, you know, this got me a lot smarter, a lot quicker. I did this job down in Swickley um, here in Pittsburgh. And this was, 13, yeah, I guess 13 years ago now. That's crazy. Um, but this was a, a one of these big old mansion homes down on the main streets down there. <clears throat> and um, I don't even know if I have, I have. I do have the picture somewhere. I'll have to bring it up someday. But um, this was a fairly large bathroom, seven, eight foot by eight foot. It was a kind of a big square room, like an older um, bathroom. And it had, I was basically re- going to be putting, taking out a, uh, one of those tubs with the finished edges on the corners, one of those round corners. And a lot of those in these older homes, like that's literally all it was. They just a tub with a, a wall mounted faucet. There wasn't even a shower head or anything. It was just a faucet. And uh, so I was removing that and putting in a walk-in shower and I didn't pay attention to, you know, I, I knew that it was old, but I, I didn't really pay attention to how much slope was in the middle of the floor. Well, as I started demoing everything, I started realizing, I was like, man, it's really dipping in the middle of this bathroom. Like, what the hell is going on here? Because it would be from one side of the room to the other, it'd be kind of level, but in the middle, it was like really bowed and it would be like almost an inch out. And this is what I uncovered. So once I tore everything out, this is, I had to tell the client. And at the time it was like, I was so cheap. I was like, I think I only charged for $1,500 to put all new joists on here. I had to take down our ceiling down below, and this is the dining room area right here. Um, but, uh, yeah, completely compromised in some areas. Absolutely no structure left here at all. Who, who Whatever plumber did this, um, this was must have been done after the fact because uh, why else would you have big square holes like this going through here? I have... It was insane. It was insane. I'm surprised the bathroom was even on the second floor. It was absolutely amazing um, because there really wasn't even this toilet uh, flange over here completely compromised. There was nothing left underneath of there. So you basically had just one joist here that had about a two inch piece and then a two inch piece here. And then everything else was, I mean, this was all completely split, but um, there was really nothing holding it up. I, they had one by material that was going diagonally in the bathroom 
from wall to wall. So that's what kind of kept everything up there. But the only way to, to address this to get on the exterior wall and on the on this was the, the living room or the dining room down below. So this was a load bearing wall here. So I had to run new joists from this side all the way out to the exterior. So let me see. I really wish I would have taken all the pictures of this as well. So this, yeah. So there's the all the compromising of it. And then this is basically the framing I did over top of it. I can't remember why I had to double something up here. I thought, oh, that was probably for the shower drain or something like that. This is probably going straight in the middle of the shower drain. But anyways, um, you know, I doubled up and put some joist hangers there. And then I had to get some room for my toilet as well. So, yeah, as you can see here, I had to double up over here. This was still sloping, too. I mean, the, the house was still settled. So I still had to shim um, up on top of this to get the floor level because um, just the way it was. But, I you know, I can't lift up the house. Um, or I wasn't, you know, about to attempt to do that. I just wanted to basically put all new joist in here. So then I ran all new plumbing, obviously. Um, but yeah, it was an absolute disaster. I've never seen anything like that. So I'm always really concerned about, um, old, uh, floors being really out of level because it can make you, um, you know, you just don't know how bad it is beneath of there. Um, so awesome possum, <laughs> if you're putting a new subfloor, uh, how thick should it be? Three quarter inch, man. Uh, 16 on center. If you can, if you have engineered joists, um, you know, I don't know if you're tearing up the whole floor and you have engineered joists later, 19 inches on center, or, or, you know, there really isn't too many at 24 inch on center, but I'd probably put some blocking in if it was 19 inches on center. You, you really want to have at least minimum three quarter inch plywood so that you can meet the deflection weighting for most tiles. Um, you know, now you still can't do marble, or travertine over three quarter inch plywood, you still have to add an additional half inch layer of plywood on top of that to get an inch and a quarter thick so that you're stay within the standards um, for that. But most porcelain ceramics, you know, um, you know, the deflection rating L3, L360 um, is basically what you want to be in three quarter inch over 16 inch on center. Uh, Joyce will do that. Actually, five ace will actually do it, but um, if you're going to replace the plywood, definitely do the three quarter inch. All right, so getting into this, boy, I'm keep going on and on here. It's almost an hour already. So thanks everybody for joining here today. I'm, I'm really uh, glad to see so many people in the chat. Uh, it's awesome to see this, and great to see the channel growing as well. I've been really excited to see all the subscribers. Definitely give me a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't. I'm sure you have at this point. Whoever's watching here, but um, blowing in insulation, you're gonna have that. Uh, definitely sucks. There's nothing you can do about it. I just, I don't even, you could go up in the attic and try to fuss around and move the stuff out of the way, but it never works. Um, unless you have a shop back that you're actually sucking everything out of there, it's still going to be a mess. So I just tear it out, just deal with it. <clears throat> Make sure I plastic off the doorway so it doesn't go into the rest of the house and just pull everything up. But I'm always expecting, um, blowing in insulation because most of these old homes, they just didn't even really have any insulation. Uh, to begin with so they used to used to add that later on and in the exterior walls like I was saying they just don't have it um, and this one didn't have it either um, vent fans you see an old vent fan in an old bathroom like this definitely not going to have uh, most likely will not have a vent to it um, probably somebody just stuck it up there and it's allowing it to vent into the attic uh, that's exactly what this was I'm not saying that's the end of the world these old homes they breathe uh, unlike the new homes that are you know, have to have these air tests. <laughs> these old homes breathe, so it's usually never really an issue. I get a lot of people commenting about, hey, you know, I've had my thing venting up in my attic forever. I don't see any mold. I don't see any problems. Yeah, you're right. It's probably not going to be a problem. It probably isn't that big of a deal. Um, I personally am still going to run a vent. I don't want to have any liability on any mold growing in your home. I'm a contractor who's supposed to know what they're doing, and um, so I would just... Uh, you know, in this particular situation, uh, there wasn't really any good solution uh, because I didn't, they didn't have any gable ends and uh, or they had I'm sorry, they had a gable end, but it was 20 feet away and then they didn't have any soffit um, overhangs. So I couldn't do a soft event, which would have been the simplest way to go. Um, but the gable end, when you're 20 feet out, you're going to have to run some hard pipe all the way over um, and uh, because you don't want to you can't go corrugated that far. Your vent fan just with all the um, the friction in a four inch corrugated line it's just not going to work it's going to it's going to have too much backflow uh, i would only go about eight feet with a corrugated line um, or any of that flex duck i should say anything after that you want to do a hard pipe 
so that the, the friction's less and it can get out of the house. Um, so 20 feet and then going through there, it was going to cost the client another, I think I quoted him 450 bucks to run it out the gable. And he said, well, I'm going to be doing a new roof one of these days. So he's going to put a roof fan above it and then just have it attached then. So that's what's going to happen on this one. But just know that you're not going to have a vent most likely. And that's going to have to be addressed. That was probably added at some point. Nothing was done with it. So, um, and then evaluating the, the plumbing and the drain, you know, in a lot of ways, it doesn't even matter because uh, I always recommend just replacing all of the, the um, water supplies with PEX. Use some uh, stub outs, uh, copper stub outs for the pedestal sink. If you're doing a pedestal sink or, you know, copper stub outs for either one. No, it doesn't really matter. And then, um, you know, you can already see right off the bat that there was an issue because uh, they had a fern co attached to the existing piping. Uh, that's never a good sign. You don't want to be redoing that. It's kind of pretty sloppy. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It's just that if you're going through the level of replacing your pump, putting a new trap um, arm on that so that uh, you can have a good, nice connection, especially a pedestal sink. You're going to see that. So um, one expected item that I didn't even pay attention to here was a gas line right here. <laughs> so this was a, actually a gas line that was hot. So I had to replace that. That's in this course as well. Just how I went about capping that. Um, you might have already seen that video that I have out on that. I'm not sure. Um, but evaluating these water supplies, it's, it can be a little bit um, difficult to know, but most likely it's going to be copper. Um, and then you're going to have uh, stub outs that go into a brass fitting. So, uh, but again, you want to just replace all that. PEX doesn't really cost that much money. Um, just knowing that you have these older valves, it's just not... Um, just not worth keeping any of that stuff and for the most part uh, again going through that gfi thing you want to just pay attention to that try to test it this client tool really helps out helps you find out whether it's dedicated basically you'll find out real quick when you shut off the breaker it shuts off the lights therefore you're gonna have to run a dedicated line so um so and then checking your so this was checking underneath so i was lucky this was the first floor bathroom so i had access below through a suspended ceiling which was awesome but this is copper uh, as you can see all inch and a half line um, so going over the toilet over here it was basically a um, double 45 fitting here going over to the, the shower or to the existing tub and then this was for your sink um, deal so most of the time where you have that issue is right where the connection point of this to the cast iron if that looks really corroded and bad um, Definitely don't keep that in place. I would definitely replace. But again, we were basically running all new uh, two inch to the shower. So none of this was going to matter anyways. But just know that if you see this, there's really, I mean, in a lot of ways, there's no reason to replace this. This stuff would probably last a really long time the way that it was. So, um, so walks one. Thanks, man. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like I was mentioning, the leaking point here uh, is where it connects into the cast iron. And uh, when you're cutting this, you definitely want to cut behind that so that you can get all your new fittings on there. I have in, in the plumbing section of this course, I really do highlight a lot of stuff um, in here that, um, you know, a lot of the fittings that I had to order ahead of time because you just can't usually get them at the local hardware store. And a lot of these plumbing departments, too, don't have some of these fittings. So. Um, you know, I kind of had an, I, I had a plan in my head of how I was going to go about this, but I wasn't sure how much room I was really going to have until you remove everything. So the plumbing could definitely take you a couple of days, um, alone. If you don't, if you don't have your stuff prepared and you don't have a lot of, uh, additional fittings on hand. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the course here. And I meant to say, I might as well do that now before I go out. If anybody wants to buy the, um, course, let me just give you a code here. I'll just put it in here in the comments. So live 62, that will give you a discount for the course for being on this live chat. So thanks so much for being here. But yeah, it's gonna basically give you 10% off um, off of this course. And again, if you get into this thing and you feel like, hey, this is just not for me, I have no problem returning it. Doesn't, you know, that's one nice thing about digital products and doing any of this stuff. None of this, um, besides the maintenance of the site, um, you know, it's not, it's not, it doesn't hurt me that badly. It's not like I'm coming out to your house and, and doing an estimate. And you're not uh, paying me for that. I can just return this. It's not a big deal. So if it's really not for you, I have no problem refunding the money on that. But um, copper, you're going to be able to see right, right off the bat, whether it's bad, all this green corrosion, um, definitely a good idea to replace. 
And every time that I've ever left some of the copper, uh, I used to do flips. I haven't done any flips in a long time. But um, when I was doing flip properties, I would leave some of the stuff, try to leave some of the stuff uh, so that I didn't have to, you know, have the expense of going through and doing more. And, um, you know, anytime I left, I didn't leave anything like this bad where it was all green like that. But uh, I did this one bathroom and uh, I left all the copper in the bathroom. It's like one of the only bathrooms that I decided to leave the copper all in. And it kind of made, reminded me not to do that from this point forward because I was all done with everything in the house. I finished the kitchen, you know, had to get a new drywall ceiling. I basically drywalled the whole house, um, not the whole house, but at least the kitchen and the main areas that I was renovating. And I went to go do the final connection for my pedestal sink. And I put the valve on the existing copper and the, it wasn't anything that I did. It was just an old, old copper line like this. And the copper just broke right off of the uh, elbow inside the wall. And it was just pouring water out everywhere. And it went through the ceiling down below. <clears throat> and it was just a mess. It was, it was horrible. And I ended up having to cut into the back of the wall and, and, uh, and redo, you know, because at that point, I can't, I'm not going to go to PEX because it's too much work. So I just soldered on a new piece of uh, copper. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely replacing everything to PEX from now on. That was not worth um, basically the 150 bucks that I was saving. It didn't save me any money. It, saved, it took me a lot of time to replace that. Sorry, my throat here. <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. I'm talking too much here. But anyways, yeah, you just don't, you know, just don't leave the copper. Just change it out to PEX. It's definitely going to be a better way to go. And if you see a little bit of stuff like this, not a big deal. I wouldn't be concerned about a little bit of corrosion. It's not that. It's just when you see it completely uh, coated in green there. So, um, but uh, yeah, let me see here. So, like I was saying, PEX not that expensive. Just run the new stuff there. <clears throat> this is the biggest thing that I would just say that you're going to just to expect. I mean, it's, it's still diff very difficult to tell whether the joists were going to be chamfered or not. And, um, you know, in this scenario, it wasn't, which was great because then, as you can see here, I basically had all uh, the floorboards even with the joists and they didn't do any chamfering and everything was pretty level for the most part. So it really wasn't bad to just add new plywood over top. I'm going to have to end this live stream. I can't even talk anymore. Um, anyways, yeah, so, but expect the worst. Uh, as I would just say that if you're doing this um, as a contracting bid for anybody, expect that you're going to have to put all new sistering on new joists, um, at least incorporate that. And that's not even that cheap that anymore these days. It's like 30 bucks for a, a 2 by 10 um, 12 I think it is, or something like that. So you can go through $200 worth of lumber um, sistering this on. You don't necessarily have to do two by tens. You don't have to sister the whole thing. It's not like you were, um, you know, something was broken. It's just they basically chamfered the top. So you can honestly use two by sixes and sister uh, to get the, a new substrate on top of that. So you don't have to go to the full extent of sistering on a whole new joist, but basically just getting enough so that you can um, put new plywood down. Um, but expect to just have to reframe it. That's what I would suggest. And that's what I did in this one. I was expecting I was going to have to do that. And I incorporated that at in my cost. And thank goodness I did too, because even though I didn't have to uh, sister on new studs and everything, the plywood and everything just cost a fortune. So it cost me more than I thought it was. $85 a sheet for the CDX plywood. Um, you know, it was about $30 more a sheet than I anticipated. Um, so yeah, just plan on sistering those. And pay attention to old repairs. I mean, you know, if you see an old repair, this was actually done nicely. And obviously I was able to see all the plumbing so you can see everything that was wrong there. But pay attention to some of those existing patch on jobs that somebody did. If it looks really ugly, you know, maybe maybe they didn't do such a great job on the rest of it. Maybe they didn't have, they maybe didn't touch it at all. But, um, you know, it just does give you some kind of indication on what kind of work and stuff was done to the home. So, um but yeah, so that's that's basically the evaluating there. I hope yeah, hope some of this stuff um, you know was helpful to you as far as uh, evaluating your bathroom. You know, reach out, leave a comment in this if you if you'd like. I wish Google would do photos sharing down below here. It would have been awesome to be able to see what other people are working on. But uh, maybe someday they will. But um, yeah. So I mean, that's really all I had for today. Uh, was just going through this evaluation process and uh, we'll probably get into a lot more um, 
stuff because I'm being when I get my next major video out on this bathroom, I'll probably have a live stream after that as well. But this is the time to start planning for your bathroom model. I know it's uh, summertime and everyone's going to be going on vacation. I'm actually going to be taking a break myself here. Um, but, uh, you know, this is the time to, to get all that stuff together and, and prepare ahead of time. So, but, um, all right, I think I might just leave it at that guys, uh, unless anybody has any more questions. Um, I really appreciate all you guys being in here. Um, and first hatch, definitely. Thanks for your super chats. Gives me a lot of motivation. So, all right, guys, um, have a good night. Thanks so much. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in, uh, in the next video. Thanks, Yusuf.